The girls went off, giggling, trailing Winnie after them. Lenny did not know what he was supposed to do, so he sauntered off into the yard, through a big gate and into the gardens. He walked along paths with wide, overgrown flower beds and peeped into long greenhouses. He found a goldfish pond like the one in the park at home, but it was choked with weeds and the fish were gone. There was a summer house, half hidden in ivy, and beyond it, set in a high stone wall, a wooden door. It was not the door to somebody's house, Lenny knew that. It was a garden door. He remembered hearing somewhere about a secret garden that was locked up for years and years, and nobody ever went in. Cautiously, he pushed the door. It creaked open. Inside was a little garden, like a room without a roof. It had crisscross mossy paths lined with knee-high hedges and stone seats. It was, in the centre was a great rose bush with trailers that swept the ground. It was very quiet in there. Then a bird flew up with a great clatter of wings and Lenny saw something on the far side of the garden, high up on a pedestal by the wall. At first he thought it was something alive and watching him, but it was too still to be alive. He went over to it. It was a unicorn carved in stone, just like the one on his medal. It did not look fierce, strong perhaps, and very beautiful, with its curved neck and long mane, prancing there alone in the shadow of the wall. It seemed as lonely as he was. Lenny felt relieved to have found this place. It made him feel more like himself again. He made up his mind to come back whenever he could. On Monday morning, the evacuees started at the village school. The children were not friendly. They looked at Lenny blankly as though he wasn't there. When the bell rang for morning prayers, Lenny had to stay alone in the classroom, sitting at a desk. On the playground, Joyce, Patsy and Winnie all went off together. Lenny was not included in the boys' soccer game. He stood by the wall until it was time to go home, clutching his dad's medal in his pocket and pretending he didn't care. <laughs>